What's up guys, Coach Madden, official trainer, YouGoProBaseball.com, and I'm here with pro pitcher John Sintez, and he's gonna go through his J-Band warm-up routine. All right, what's up guys? All right, so with the J-Bands, what I like to do is, I know they come with the Velcro straps to go on the wrist, but me personally, I don't like what my hand connection is where my forearm gets to my shoulder right there. It kind of feels different than actually when I'm pitching. You're actually supposed to, when you put them around your wrist, you're supposed to keep your wrist loose. But I like to feel the connection of my wrist, my elbow, my arm when I'm doing my bands. What I like to do is I like to get in a split stance because that's where everything in baseball is done is, is in the split stance. I'm gonna start off with a hold. Now this is the key to the whole thing I personally think is we start and end with this with our guys out in California. So we're gonna get right here with a neutral grip. We're gonna pull in deep and we're gonna squeeze our scaps as hard as we can for 30 seconds. That's the first one. The second one, we're gonna to go to what's called a flat field goal. Now the flat field goal is exactly what it sounds like. We're gonna start out right here. We're gonna to try to get our elbows and our hands at 90 degrees and get our elbows past our shoulders and squeeze those scaps again as hard as we can for 30 seconds. Okay, should start feeling something there. So on this one, obviously they're trying to feel it back in the scaps. On the row one, where are they trying to feel it? At? It's gonna feel a little bit more in the lat and the back of the shoulder, perfect. The last one, the hardest one to do, and it's a great indicator to athletes to if they have any kind of arm soreness or weakness, is when we're gonna go pull straight to a field goal, we're gonna pull straight to the field goal, same concept, arms at 90s, elbows past the shoulder, right here, hands above the head. Now, if you notice the bands right there, the bands aren't jumping. If you see a kid who's got a weak shoulder, or if you're worried about it, you'll see the bands start moving just a little bit right there, because the shoulder won't be able to handle the workload. Now let me ask you this while you're holding, how much thoracic extension or bend curvature in the back should you have when you're doing this? Like a weaker guy I can imagine is gonna be like. You do, you see a lot of younger guys that get into it and you really see that they try to get their body weight involved and that's not what you wanna do. You, want, you don't wanna lean back and cheat and use the lower back and the legs too much. You really wanna stay upright with the posture, keep the lower back arched and everything locked out because it's more about the arms and flooding the shoulder with blood in order to be able to get the efficient warm up. Of Next, you're probably used, you've probably seen these here. We're gonna do some chest flies right here. Get out here, when you're doing chest flies, we're trying to keep our hands right here, even with our shoulders from as deep as we can. We're gonna go out and the concept is we're not gonna clap our hands together. We're gonna to act like we're hugging a tree. We're gonna go out, keep the elbows bent a little bit and come back to from here. We're just gonna to try to really get that chest involved to get them a nice pump into the shoulder. And how many of these are you gonna do? Probably do about 10 to 12. And are there any days when you're feeling sore or tired or tight where you manipulate the number of reps, um, where you're just listening to your arm, or are you always going off of a set method? Uh, I'm probably listening to my arm more, more than anything, but I'm trying to make sure I'm getting two sets of 10. The concept of the stop and go to try to get the blood flow to get the pump, as you guys get going, if you've been in the gym, you feel the pump. The whole thing is about getting the blood pump into the shoulders and the chest and all the muscles that we're gonna do before we go into the throwing motion. Another one right here that I like to do is, is just a little bit more of a cross angle. You've seen some of the bands out there, everybody preaches this kind of X movement right here. You see a lot of it in the CrossFit world. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this band, keep the palm up, make sure the chest is activated. And I'm gonna try to keep everything stable, go across in front and then come back down slow right here. I might do 10 to 12 reps of those, but I'm gonna try to make sure I go as far as I can without feeling my body or my chest moving. Try to keep everything square and then come back slow and keep the band out away from my body going here to come back. And then we can do the same thing from here, going out to get to the back of the shoulder, going here, going out and up right here, and then to come back right here. Do you want to stable? Do you want to externally rotate the hand at all when you're going up slightly? So or? yeah, so the way it was explained to me is it's called swords right here. So if you can see my hand right here, it looks like I'm taking a sword out of like a sheath. And then we're going to go up. We're going to rotate the hand and the thumb to actually do a point of sword up into the sky. Bring it all the way back down right here. Now, question for the ones you did in front. For me, I do these at the gym with the cable. Um, do you want to kind of uh, let your shoulder come out and forward, or do you want to stay uh, engaged in the scap point? I like to keep the, the scap engaged to keep it down. I think one of the a lot of problems with ball players is you see where the shoulders roll forward or up, and if you don't know how to keep the shoulder down, 
then it's harder for your arm to operate, especially when you go through your throwing motion of your operation. If the shoulder plane rotates forward, you can see how my hand goes forward here, it actually causes a little bit more stress in the front of the shoulder and then underneath the scap. So the less tension I can create through a throw, the less issues and the less soreness right there. So really when you're doing these, you really want to focus on correct technique, going slow, controlled, and just getting that blood going. Around. Exactly, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, every day is a different day, and I'm trying to find out how my body feels in the day, how I'm gonna operate, what the smoothness feels like, because some days you may wake up, feel good, but you go to the park, when you get to the park, you do some advance, and ooh, maybe I am a little sore, or there's something that doesn't feel exactly right, like I'm used to, so it's a, it's a great evaluator of your own body before you go out there. I think a lot of people don't have the awareness because they rely on a trainer or a coach or a dad instead of learning what your body feels like and being able to push yourself in there. So not only a great warm up, but also a great assessment tool to learn how your arm feels before you throw. Exactly. All right, so quick question. What about the height of the uh, carabiner there where you're hooking it up to get uh, you know, for obviously some guys are shorter, some guys are taller. What so do you suggest? where you want to go with the height wise is you want to kind of have it in the middle of your chest right there. You don't want it even with your eyes or anything. You don't want to have an accent or anything. But for these exercises that are these main three exercises that take what we've been here about a minute or two to really get blood flow. And as you get stronger, things going, you want to increase the number of sets. Most of the guys that I work with in California, we do two sets to warm up, maybe three to five sets with 30 second holds to end with. And even with that, and we also have some other good exercises here that I really like to get the whole body into. We're gonna to go to the very bottom of the, of the cage right there. And then when we get into it, we're gonna go into a little bit of a hinge into a Y into there. So when we go into the hinge of the Y, we're gonna start with our chest up, same split stance, weight forward. Now we're gonna shift our weight back and do a full extension up with a small two second hold and then control it to go back. You see a lot of guys that go up and come back fast and when you come back fast you can injure the shoulder a little bit it's not exactly a natural movement to go that way so we're going to get in there and just kind of pull up hold it one two three come back slow feel the weight shift go there trying to control everything to warm up i think one of the the biggest misconceptions that you hear every uh, for young guys is is they tell you to go out and stretch right but if you notice how the how the, the next level guys, the elite guys, the way they, they warm up, it's a different concept. That's why we like these bands, we like dynamic warm ups, we don't, we don't like the stretching circles that aren't very efficient in warming up. Great uh, point there, and I wanna elaborate on or ask your opinion on. So, should we be doing our bands before the dynamic stretching, jogging, all that stuff, getting the blood going, or after, what's your opinion? Well, I think that with the way everybody sets up their team warm-ups and everything, I, I always tell all, all my guys to get there 10, 15 minutes early to do your own stuff on your band just in case they don't do that. Because you know how coaches are, if you break away from the team to go do your own band set, the coach is gonna think you're not part of the team, you're an eye guy, things that, that, uh, that, that aren't are negative for you. So better to get them in when you can versus op optimally, if you could, do it after dynamic warm-up, yeah, but that's not always the case. Exactly, that's not always gotcha. the case. So if for me personally, when I'm doing this, I feel like I don't really have to do a lot of stretching or very much. I can just jump right into the bands and go from there, but I'm a little bit different. I'm a very active guy like a lot of you guys, so my soreness level isn't exactly as, as high as most guys. And this is actually going to be kind of a full body workout, especially when you're coming here. you got to engage everything, exactly. the glutes, the abs, the arms, everything. Exactly. And everything, The I really believe in the more stable that your muscles and your joints can become, the more efficient your body's going to operate. You see a lot of guys, the long and lanky, the lanky guys that can't really do a plank or do a push-up or and it has nothing to do with the strength. I think of the joints that can't handle that stability. So if we can work on that stability by holding things when we're doing stuff, we're gonna get way more out of that. If you guys liked this video, hop on over to John Sintez uh, on Instagram. It's jsintez34, Cutter Nation. Check him out. He's got a YouTube channel as well. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe to YouGoPro and then go check out some of these other videos we did together.